Hi both. I'm Sarah from The Upcoming. Such a pleasure to speak to you. Thank you. Um, I was in bits watching this documentary. That's just the first thing to say. Like, I don't know, <laughs> feeling emotional, even crying, you know, uh, like what a journey it takes you on. Um, but maybe just to kick off for people who don't know anything about it, you can just give a brief introduction. What can they expect? Okay. Um, the rescue is about the 2018 rescue efforts to save a, the, a Thai football team and their coach who got trapped deep inside a cave. And obviously you'd been working on Free Solo previously, which is, you know, uh, similar kind of trepidatious sort of thing to be filming, but above ground. And so this is going the other way. Um, what led you to want to make your next documentary about this topic? Well, I would say, unlike Free Solo, the, or different from Free Solo, the stakes are much higher in the story. Um, and I don't know if you think, if you think back to that summer of 2018, you know, it was probably kind of like a dark moment in the world politically. And I, you know, both Jimmy and myself were kind of transfixed by this story. Um, we were moved by this idea of so many different people coming together to really achieve what looked absolutely impossible. You know, it was a miracle to get, you know, the whole thing. And that idea was something that we thought would make a very, would, could be like the essence of a very important film. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why we wanted to make it. And at what point, you know, when this was unfolding, did you get involved? Because I was watching it and I was thinking, it seems like you were there from the, the very beginning and, and, and filming throughout. And then of course you must've had to go back and also, you know, collate all the other footage that you could find from elsewhere. So at what point were you sort of there, you know, filming? Um, we, this is the first, this is the first film we've made where we were not present for the principal mm -hmm. action. Mm -hmm. um, so most of it's archival and interview based. Um, and we had inherited this, I mean, there was a rights situation around this story where one studio acquired the life rights for the children and their families. Another studio acquired the life rights for some of the divers. And it's something we don't really see in nonfiction very much, but because of the Hollywood versions, that's what happened. Mm -hmm. um, so we actually inherited this film from another filmmaker. Um, when we heard that the film became available again at National Geographic, we asked them for it. Mm -hmm. And John, just to bring you into the conversation, you know, so what did it mean to you for, I guess, having been through this experience that someone was going to go back and collate all this footage and kind of, you know, it's like a monument really to, to what happened and to your experience. So why did you want to be involved with the project? While we were in Thailand, we deliberately avoided the press. And that was something that, that, that for us at the time was the right thing to do. We focused on the particular job that we had to do. And that was one of the reasons perhaps we were as successful as we were. But, but afterwards, we realized that perhaps the story had been told at a very superficial level, but without any detail and uh, without any of the, the emotion or the, the actions that, that we've taken. And so certainly as a group of divers, we, we were quite keen to, to, to try and provide that story and to provide some of the detail of the procedures that we'd used, because after all, a lot of this hadn't been done before. And although there have been a, a number of uh, de debriefs and so on, this film does pull together almost all of the strands from all of the teams and the viewpoints. So some of those viewpoints are not technical. I mean, that's that's my viewpoint, perhaps but some of the emotional viewpoints as well. And seeing all of those pulled together uh, in, in such a, a, a tight thread is, it's interesting, it's rewarding. And certainly I've perhaps learned about the spiritual side in Thailand. And also I've learned some things about my co-divers that perhaps I didn't know before. Yeah. And Chai, maybe you can talk us through a little bit the process of making it. So you say it's kind of inherited um, you know, the, the start of the making of this film and plus all this footage, like where do you even begin when, when you have all that? And where, when do you decide to kind of go and do additional interviews and how do you piece that all together into what has become, you know, a very compelling narrative? Well, I would say that in documentary films, it's the challenges that make them interesting. And this 
film had the fundamental challenge where there was no known footage from within the cave. Okay, so what are you gonna watch? You know, and there was tons of footage from the outside, but it was all taken at a distance. So it became very clear early on that we had to do reenactments, which were really more like demonstrations. Um, we shot them at a studio in Pinewood in a tank with John, with Rick, with many of the divers, and they showed us what they did. Because if you think back to it, no one saw what they did. Not only if you could film in, it was pitch black and muddy. Um, and there are certain elements, like when you watch someone, a, you know, someone bind a child's hands behind their back and bind their feet together and push their head underwater, that it was, you know, the emotional weight of it, um, the stakes, they really could come to life. And for me as a storyteller, it was very valuable to see that. Um, and also we used real Thai children who acted in the reenactments and it was interesting to see John and Rick and the divers interact with them. Um, so we did some um, reenactments. We called from the press, you know, from outside the cave. And then we, John had told me about, he, he's always said that like, I remember filming this motivational cheer, but no one had ever seen the, 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 the images because basically the Thai Navy SEALs gave cameras to some of the divers. Um, so we negotiated with the Thai Navy SEALs for over two years. They said no many, many times. Um, and then finally, when I was able to go to Thailand, um, they agreed to collaborate with us. And, you know, we had anticipated maybe an hour of usable footage. It turned out to be 87 hours. And it was kind of like one of those like documentary miracles. Like this never happens. It never happens. And, you know, all those images of the children and of the rescue have never been seen before. Um, you know, and they had all the moments, like when John and Rick first find the children and John leads this amazing motivational cheer to them emerging in chamber three to let the tiny V seals know that they found the children, you know, the stuff the children eating for the first time with Dr. Pack, with the blankets, you know, all of that stuff was just never before seen. But I think, you know, additionally, it brought to life chambers three to one, because those images of where you see 200 people hand passing a child in the stretcher. I mean, you finally understand the scale and why you needed so many, why so many people had to come together to effect this rescue. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so it was hard and tricky, but it always felt like the good fight because there was there was something very special about this story. Yeah. And for you, John, what was it like having to go back, I guess, kind of reliving so many of those moments, you know, both when you're sort of doing the interviews and then even doing these reenactments. And then I guess finally, watching the documentary as a whole, you know, what was that whole process like for you? The reenactments certainly were interesting, where I certainly felt a, a significant weight of responsibility. As Chai said, we, we used real Thai children. And, and so that responsibility for, for quite literally their lives again, I, I felt quite quite strongly. And, and although they were enactments, they were a about as real as it possibly could have been with with those children so that certainly uh, again for, for me made it very very real we we, we had the, the same equipment we would use that the same children and we went through all, all the same procedures essentially to demonstrate what we did I having seen the film the film the film is is good it, it's quite odd seeing yourself on screen it's not something I, I have to say I particularly enjoy it works well and I, I think it conveys the size of the team the scope of the challenge the number of different groups and how we all work together and that that to me is one of the most important things inevitably Jimmy and Chai produce human films and so we knew there would be a thread about cave divers in, in in some way, but I think on balance, probably that that adds to the film. And Chai, yeah, I was going to ask kind of about that because I think that's um, something that was incredibly successful in, in Free Solo was kind of, you know, sort of cutting between, um, you know, a focus on the kind of athletic ability, you know, of of what's happening in that film and kind of the emotional and personal drama behind the scenes. And then there's kind of that nice balance in this film as well. And, and we do learn about a lot about the cave divers 
um, and their backgrounds and, you know, what leads you to be kind of um, an expert in that, in that kind of hobby. So um, was that something important to you? And, you know, did you discover quite amazing things about, you know, the world of cave diving in the process? Um, it was very important to, to us. Um, you know, Free Solo is not really a film about climbing a mountain, right? You know, it's, it's about pursuing your dreams of diligence and determination um, and learning how to manage your fear. And, you know, The Rescue, I think, is a film about great moral courage and this idea of doing your best and doing the right thing to save 13 strangers. Um, so the character part, I, I look at these more as character portraits because I think it's the people who you can get involved with. You know, it's not just a procedural. So in its best form, it works together, you know? So yes, the human side of it, um, understanding, what prepared John and Rick and the dive team for that to be ready for that moment, you know, and what allowed them to be ready for that moment um, was very important to us. And even watching it, John, so it's like, there's almost some quite, you know, borderline humorous moments where there's like these hundreds of, you know, Navy um, SEALs, you know, all these other people brought in and then there's like, it's like two or three of you, you know, <laughs> it's kind of British guys, some with that homemade equipment and you're able to do things that none of these other trained people are able to do. So what was that feeling like for you? And, you know, that kind of contrast, um, but then you also kind of blew all their minds at the same time. Firstly, the people that you're talking about, highly trained, were highly trained and very accomplished in their areas of, of expertise. And I think that's really important to remember. When you bring in a, a, a military organization, and in the UK at the moment, the, the government's answer seems to be bring in the army. I'm, I'm not getting political, but we as a population assume that they can work magic. And in their field of expertise, they possibly can. But a cave is not really a battlefield and we have made a, a, a hobby, a career, a passion out of exploring caves and solving problems. And when you talk about homemade equipment, you, you, you visualize things that, yes, maybe have been uh, created in garages and what have you, but they've been designed by people with a vast amount of experience to solve very specific problems. And so our expertise perhaps lay in a, in a different area from the military. So we, we were able to use those expertise to, to do what needed to be done, not because we were any better than anybody else, but just because we were different. And I think what's really amazing about the documentary is it obviously, you know, brings us right up close to the action. And, you know, there's so many moments where, you're, you know, on the edge of your seat wondering what's going to happen. But then there are other moments where we're able to see the beauty and the, the appeal of cave diving and being underwater. So was that also something important in the making of the documentary and the way it looks is to also show those moments? Because to me, it would just always, you know, seem horrific <laughs> to be in a cave but there's also beautiful shots where you can see that it is this other world, like being in space, you know, something like that. I mean, it was very important, but less to make the film pretty and more to try to help people like me or you understand why John and Rick may want to do this, you know, what they find, the great adventure they find in cave diving and caving. And so what do you hope the impact of this film to be? Um, of course, you know, it's so eye opening and, you know, obviously showing people a side of this story that they might not have been able to see. Um, but, you know, you really do come away from it um, feeling impacted, I think. So, you know, what, how, how do you want audiences to walk away from, from seeing your film? Well, you make these documentaries in like a dark room and you hope on a wing and a prayer that when you show it to audiences, they understand why you wanted to make this film. and. It's been very humbling to see people react to the film as they are. And, you know, really for us, it's again about this idea of, you know, connection as opposed to division. It's this idea of 
doing the right thing in a time where no one seems to be doing the right thing, you know, and being your best self, um, being generous. And so I hope it's just a reminder of like the beauty of humanity um, and with a somewhat hopeful, you know, thing. And I think it's also interesting, you know, because of the pandemic, so many people are evaluating what they're doing with their lives. And there's something about hearing the story of these cave divers who pursued a passion for years. And with this rescue, it becomes a calling. It was actually preparation for this one moment of doing great good. Um, so I don't know, you know, I hope, I, ho I hope people enjoy it. And I also hope they bring their kids because it's rated PG and I think it's a great film for kids to watch. Yeah. And John, what do you hope that people will take away from it? I think as Chai says, it, it's an interesting time at the moment and we continued to, to, to progress. E even when things looked hopeless, we were able to swing that round and take small steps and progress towards a goal and just taking those small steps eventually we reached that goal almost it was unexpected we, we were we were successful and i think if people are able to understand that just one step uh, allows you to see a little bit further and perhaps the next step is slightly easier and you can see a bit further and suddenly you realize you're out of the forest and you can see the plain and you can see the wood for the trees so to speak mm. that's that's perhaps the message for me. Just keep going or be brave enough to start even. And Chai, um, maybe you're going to let this one sink in and um, for audiences to see it first, but have you already got your eyes set on your next documentary subject? We've been working on a long-term documentary about Yvonne Chouinard, who founded Patagonia, about Doug Tompkins and Chris Tompkins, Christine Tompkins. And it's basically a story about the original eco warriors. Um, and these are all Jimmy's mentors. So it's been like a very personal journey. Um, and we expect that film to be done, you know, kind of this time next year. Amazing. Well, thank you both so much for sharing all that with me and for making this, you know, incredible, incredible and touching documentary. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry to speak to you both. Bye. Thank, thank you. you.